I'd actually love to know, are there uh, favorite functions or shortcuts that, that you like to use in Premiere? So actually, same question for you, Russell. Um, what, what are some uh, secret tips and tricks of the trade? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> That's a loaded question. <laughs> You mean in terms of how we organize productions or during my editorial process? During your editorial process. Um, yeah, sure. I definitely do. Um, be because an edit is a very fluid thing and it's always shortening and lengthening and it's always moving around or you lose a shot, you lose a shot or you add a shot, you add a shot. If you have a music cue in there, this is a technique I, I started many years ago and it's really worked well. Um, and you have a music cue that, that starts at the very beginning and it's perfect and it buttons right at the end, perfect. I look for within the body of the music, I look for a, a moment in the music where it just is kind of a sustain, kind of fluidy, not so much rhythmic -y. And I will basically put them on two separate tracks. So then when I'm shortening and lengthening the cut, all I have to do, these two music cues just slide underneath each other and I don't have to do big music edits. And it doesn't always work, but it does work like 90% of the time. And so I go in and I just let it go and I make the changes I wanna go and do. And then I look down at the music track and I see, oh, there it is. And I do it with my uh, artist mix and I just fade out one music and bring it in and I'm done. Whereas for many years, every time I would make a picture change, as little as a couple of frames, um, I'd have to go back and look for a music edit and try and do a trim and try and do this. And th that has saved so much time. But now you guys have the feature from Audition. Remix. Yeah, what is it yeah. called? Remix. Right, exactly. Remix, yeah. yeah. So remix for those it's trippy. listening at home. It, it hey, it is actually, uh, it saved me last week with an edit, actually. Um, so yeah, uh, check out remix. Uh, it essentially allows you to adjust the overall um, length of whatever your music track is, and it uses AI. It does a pretty good job. I've yet to break it. Um, I'm a, I'm definitely a big fan of remix. It, it really does an impressive job. It's like I yeah. listen to it and I listen to where that music edit is and I go, oh my God, that's very cool what it did. I know, because I can't tell you how many times I myself have been sitting here I, and you know, I, I wish I could be like that music DJ that like has a good sense of rhythm and like, let's face it, like <laughs> I'm, I'm trying, yeah. but it, it, no, it's, it's, it's very helpful. It's easier said than done. Yeah, for sure. How about you, Russell? Any uh, special pro tips? Yeah, I'm trying to think of, yeah, so, so some that I feel like maybe fly under the radar. Um, one is, uh, you know, I just, I feel like editors are very uh, 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 focused on their shortcuts of just like, you know, how to, how to, how to really like get the, get the, the miles, you know, how, 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 how much you're moving your hand across the keyboard down as much as possible. And something that I, I love is that uh, shortcuts I discovered only recently are panel specific in a lot of cases. And so, as where in other uh, NLEs, it's there. You know, you're sharing the keyboard with all the shortcuts. You can, you know, your your shuttle when you're in the timeline. You know, that can be reused. Those same buttons can be reused when you're in a project. And so, um, what I like is that I'm able to really minimize the amount of shortcuts I have on the keyboard that require like modifiers. So I'm not always hitting like control option shift. Like I can just make something A and it does five different things in five different locations. You know, when you're working with like a Wacom tablet, it's like you got the pen in one hand, you got your hand on the keyboard and it's, I love that I can keep everything sort of shifted to the left side and really consolidated and concise, which is cool. Um, also uh, another underrated one is a, uh, and we really utilize it a lot in Devotion is adaptive tracks. Okay. Um, it was a uh, it was really powerful for a couple of reasons that we were able to uh, we use it to essentially sort of route the multi-channel audio so that Billy was able to listen to his uh, his his in his room in 3.0 and then kind of feed that out into. Uh, uh, what do you call it, through loopback and some other things so that JD was able to hear his stuff accurately in 2.0. Um, 
And then also it let us, when we're doing things like turnovers and sending to uh, sound or music, we can build these simple templates where we can just nest our sequences into other sequences and it'll just output dialogue, just output sound effects, just output music. And, uh, yeah, really, really digging into the adapter tracks was extremely helpful and really cool. Yeah, uh, I can definitely imagine. And also with, you know, keyboard shortcuts, I think, you know, that's uh, that's one of the, the things that I would also throw out to any, you know, newcomer editor. I mean, any any opportunity you can you can possibly take to cut down the number of keystrokes that you're doing every single day is is kind of one of the the hallmarks of, uh, you know, an efficient editor, let's say. Um, I guess kind of on that note, um, what would what would both of you characterize as as kind of the um, you know the the key uh, attributes of of a great editor? Um, are what separates just a good editor from a great one? Is it is it you know creative vision? Is it is it technical ability? If you if you had to kind of boil it down, what would what would your advice be? Uh, I would say the difference between really good editor and a good editor is two things. One, a great editor, I believe. I believe that the I believe that the edits are ultimately determined by the film. And the film tells you where to cut. It's not really the editor, because if if you force an edit, it feels like a forced edit. So it's it's an editor who knows how to listen to the film and listen to emotionally what you should be doing here, or more importantly, what you shouldn't be doing. Because oftentimes a person thinks that because they're an editor, they need to make edits. But I actually think that a, a good editor is almost more akin to a publishing editor in that it's it's a good editor knows when not to cut. And you don't have to, just because you're being paid a salary doesn't mean you have to make edits. Uh, and and uh, so I think that's a critically important part. Uh, and then the last one is the difference between a really good editor and a good editor is how far that person can reach into their gut and how much they can make the, you do not make, you do not make edits with your hands. You do not make edits with your eyes and your brain. You make edits by how far you can reach into your stomach. And, and the farther you can reach into your stomach uh, makes for emotional, uh, powerful uh, storytelling. I love that. That is uh, probably one of the best answers I've ever heard <laughs> to, that, to that question. Uh, I, I, have to, I have to throw it back at you, Russell. That's a, that's a tough answer to follow. What would... Uh, I'm not beating that. <laughs> nothing better than that. Oh man, that's like uh, that's like the intro, the uh, uh, overview of a uh, you know how to edit novel, like right there. I think um, that's that's definitely the uh, the thesis. But um, okay, as far as uh, as far as your careers and how you got started, I would love to better understand. Um, how did how did you even get into editing? How did you uh, did you grow up always wanting to be an editor? Were you super into movies when you were a kid? Um, what what led you here? How'd you get here? Russell, you go next. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, for me, I was. Uh, I feel like this is probably something that happened with a lot of people. You know, you discover a camera when you're younger, and you're like, oh, I can, I can recreate stuff that I'm seeing on TV already and like you know being being a film fan when I was younger it was like oh this, this is amazing you get to do this but um I was also you know I, I uh, big into computers and did uh what do you call it was lucky enough to be into programming at somewhat of a young age and so I was very much you know one foot in that world and one foot in the the making you know, making little short films and stuff. And I remember like being in, it was like middle school discovering, wait a minute, I can put the pictures in the computer and then start working <laughs> in there. And it was this 
Yeah, so it started as definitely kind of a technical accomplishment, like, oh, you get this card and you're able to, you know, you download, you get this, I remember it was a ULEAD Video Studio, I think it's what it was called. Um, but yeah, at the time it was like editing kind of felt like a bridge between those two worlds of the creative and the technical, which I thought was really, you know, attractive. And Russell, did you go to film school? Uh, I went, uh, not film school, no, I went to a, a school in Connecticut, uh, Quinnipiac. It was, uh, I did, but I did go for media production, um, which I have to say one of, the, one of the benefits of that was that particular school, um, a lot of the people in the department weren't super into being in media production. It just kind of felt like they weren't really super interested in it. And because of that, uh, the people who were interested had endless access to equipment all the time. Everything was available. Studios were always open. And uh, yeah, so you just kind of, you know, you, you meet people through that and you're like, oh, this is, huh, just keep keep making as much as we want with no real limitation, which is cool. So how did you how did you make that jump once you left college? Did you um, did you start out doing something else on set, like as a PA, or uh, you know, how, did you join a TV station? Did you have internships? How did how did you get from college to now? Yeah, I worked uh, I worked in New York a little bit and did worked on documentary the documentary side of things, and then uh, you know dabbled a little bit as a PA, and then. Uh, once I moved out to LA, I actually, I actually fell into the advertising world. And so I was mostly in, in the commercial, the commercial side of, uh, editorial for like, or something like that. Um, which is a really fascinating side of it to be in because you get the opportunity to retry over and over and over things are so short projects last two three four days or you know campaigns last a couple of weeks and so you you kind of get that opportunity to begin beginning middle and end just over and over and over and you you get the opportunity to work with a lot of different types of people and a lot of different workflows a lot of different cameras so um yeah that that was that was i think one one nice benefit before moving into into features where you get to really utilize that what you've learned there and just apply it to long form yeah i bet uh well billy same question for you how 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 do we end up here how do we end up as the the lead editor on all of these major motion pictures were you um, have you always wanted to be an editor yes basically really yeah, yeah. from day one Pretty much, yeah. I, I, um, there's an even story that goes even farther back, but I, I actually was always interested in. I, I became edit uh, interested in editing. On there was no picture editing when I was young. There was no VCRs. There was nothing like that. But there was audio recorders, and I started splicing audio tape and putting pieces together and and found incredible combinations of sounds and started working with sound. Um, I've also been always really interested in electronics. Uh, it, it, not so much computers in the beginning, it was audio gear. And I was always into speakers and amplifiers and preamps and varying equipment and way too many speakers and building boxes and all kinds of wild stuff. My mom was a huge movie buff and she really laid a foundation of appreciation of great cinema. And she would tell me when we're going to be watching this movie and this movie. And so I learned an appreciation of, of not only Hollywood movies, but world cinema. And um, I, I got a job at a TV station, and then I got a job in a production company. And then I felt it was time to go to Los Angeles, so I got a job at NBC. And I was cutting documentaries during the week, and I was doing NBC Sports on the weekends. And, I did the, and, and the goal was to do the Olympics. And um, I got assigned to do the Olympics. And then uh, they boycotted the Olympics. And I said, and so there were no Olympics. So I, I um, left NBC and I went freelance as, as an editor. And um, basically, I've been, uh, and, and always trying to get towards more, more and better drama. Because when I first started, I came up as an electronic person and and editing on tape and CMX and Grass Valley and and all of you know all feature films and all serious dramas were all being done in 
film, all being cut on film, well, certainly being shot on film, but edited on film. And I lived over here. And how do I jump over this river? I like, you don't do it, you can't do it. And I considered becoming a film assistant and I was look, I knew I needed to get over there, but I didn't know how. And then lo and behold, the, it just kind of happened and that this so-called river that separated electronic to, to film just kind of dried up. And all of a sudden, oh, you're, you're an electronic editor. Well, that negative, a positive, all of a sudden, oh, you know how to do that? And the demand for electronic editors became stronger and stronger. And uh, so I was able to slowly but surely, I did a lot of music videos and commercials and TV shows and long forms and just anything I could get my hands on. I love doing visual effects. I did anything I could because I loved the post-production process. I liked any part of it. And I felt that to learn as many facets as possible makes you a more valuable commodity. Not just one thing, but to know, not all of it, but as many as you can get your hands on. And so I just kept moving and moving and moving and moving. And um, it, it just was a progression. Yeah, I think part of it is, it sounds like part of it's luck, you know, you bet on, you, you bet on the right horse as far as leaning into the, the, the technology at the, the right time. And that seemed yeah. to really, really work out. And um, Russell, I mean, it kind of seems like your background with in commercials really was kind of the best case scenario primer for kind of ending up in features. And I think, um, you know, the, the lessons that each, each of those types of production, um, you know, can teach really ultimately empower editors to to work flexibly.